Hey guys, I'm just going to back up here so I don't look like Wilson and you can see my mouth. That was a home improvement reference, by the way. If any of you remember home improvement, the TV show. Well, I don't usually do my sermons in the morning, but today it's just burning inside me, so I decided to do it in the morning instead of the evening. Um, it's called Gem. I will explain that in a minute. Father, I thank you for what you've done and what you're about to do. Lord, I thank you that lives will be changed through this sermon. I thank you that your spirit will be felt through the screen this morning. I thank you that your your power will be will be felt this morning like never before. I I thank you for freedom. I thank you for clarity and understanding, Lord God. Hide me behind the cross. I'm nothing but yours. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, hi guys. Well, uh, today's sermon is called Gem, God's Emerging Miracle. And the genesis of this sermon came last week when I was watching a minister, a pastor whom I really admire, a wonderful man of God who, who I've always really admired, but he said something that kind of um, got to my spirit a bit. He said, he said, I'm tired of seeing people rolling, rolling up in here without being healed. Um, think um, referring to people in wheelchairs coming to his church and when he said that because he was someone I, he is someone I really admire I was kind of floored and kind of disturbed by it I wasn't really offended I understand the sentiment but I think we really need to uh, look beyond what we see and the Lord said don't he said he said don't see he said the problem with people is sometimes uh, um, they see the sin and the situation that people are in they don't bother to see the soul and the spirit of, of the person and when you when you approach any person it's so important to ask the Lord Lord just quietly and silently Lord what is you what is your reason for me meeting that person what is your agenda in that person's life do you want me to assist with that with your your agenda in that person's life um because people are people are hurting they're broken they need god especially people with disabilities people that are um People that are gay, people that are like living, living lives that we would consider wrong and sinful, um, and God would consider consider that to a certain extent. But first, what God sees is a person. He sees a soul and a spirit. He doesn't see a sin in a situ situation. But the problem with people is they see a sin, a sin and a situation first and then they see the soul and the spirit. So we need to see with God's eyes. We need to see people's souls and their spirit. Because when you, when you ask 
for God for his eyes and you start to see how he sees it changes your world and you would never completely see how God sees or um, how he views him but if you ask him trust me he will give you glimpses and it will change your life he will give you experiences that you won't ever believe he will cause you to see the genuineness of people he will call you call you cause you to see the ingenuineness of people as well and we've got to see that everyone has gold in them despite their situation despite their sin despite whatever they're going through they have gold in them and they just need someone to pull it out and I would say that's the job of every leader and every pastor is to pull out the gold in your congregation pull out the gold in people you meet pull out what they have inside of them that is dormant because a lot of people have been put down have been told that they're nothing have been told that they have nothing to offer especially people that are marginalized people that society would say oh you're homeless you have a disability you don't it will just placate you we won't we won't cause you to rise to your excellence um the way god wants you to and it's our job to say no despite where you sit despite where you stand stand despite how you look like despite your disability despite anything you have excellence inside of you way down dormant and it does not have anything to do with your external factors and i always think of moses and the thing we forget about moses sorry that's my chair um is is he always not always in exodus um he said i was slow of speech he had a stuttering problem and in spite of that problem he he delivered the children of israel he commanded pharaoh to let them go he he almost brought them to sinai not quite or sorry not sinai but canaan he did go to sinai to get the ten commandments but he almost brought them to Canaan, but not quite, but that was another issue. But despite all that Moses did, he, the Bible said nothing about God healing his stutter. And this is something that we don't even, um, we don't even talk about. That Moses did all of this and Moses did what he did. But he did it with a stutter. So, wherever you find yourself, whatever God has put in you to do, um, do it anyway. Do it whatever state you find yourself in. Because he'll use the things that you think are no good and the things from your past and the things you think disqualify you for his glory he'll use all of that and sometimes all those things make you even more relatable to people so so because the lord needs people in every area of life for every person because all 
although the word of God is the same, people's personalities are different. Somebody won't respond to me, but they'll respond to somebody else because of that person's, person's lifestyle or because of that person's background. And God needs all of us. So all I have to say today is God needs you. God needs you. You are a gem. You are God's emerging miracle. Which means you may not be there yet. You may have a lot of growing to do, a lot of work to do, but we all do. And God can use you right where you are in the growing stages but you're so, you're something precious you're something beautiful you're something wonderful and he wants me to say that you are you are valuable to him and he wants me to say to leaders when when anyone comes to your church except accepting no one no one's excluded from this. Everyone is a gem. And your job as a pastor is not to focus on trying to fix their situation. You help their situation because that's what we do. But we don't try to fix them or uh, only focus on that. We focus on what the inside is and try to pull it out with the Word of God. So, what, what leaders need to ask God um, is, this is, this is something God spoke to me as an emerging leader. He said, what you need to ask me is to show you, to give you my eyes for people. To let you see what you see. To let you see what I see, rather, when it comes to people. Too many times we discount people because they're in wheelchairs, because they have disabilities, because they have issues because they were a single mom, because they may be in a state that we deem like inappropriate or whatever, God is working on them. He has them in his hands, like that old song says. He's got the whole world in his hands. He didn't say he's got Christians in his hands. He said, He's got the whole world in his hand. So God so loved the world. We tend to forget that God loves everybody. And he came for everybody. And everybody, every single person under the sound of my voice has a gem inside of them. Has gold inside of them. And they need miners. Pastors are miners. And their job is to see that person and to dig out the gold in them. To dig out the gold in them. To go past the surface. To go past the disability. To go past the sin. To go past the, the gay. To go past the lesbian. To go past uh, the hoeing around. To go past whatever you might you might you might see in them and dig until you find the gem dig until you find the diamond dig until you find the gold because when you hit gold in that person that person will emerge to be something beautiful to be something productive to be something that God is using. And don't despise that, that person where they are now because you don't know how God is working on them. 
you don't know what God is using. You don't know what God is doing in their lives. And too many times we've despised the person. We've miscounted the person because they don't look like the quote-unquote Christian person or because we think they need our they need God's healing and that's all they need and I'll tell you as a person with a disability that's not all we need we need Jesus just like you do and sometimes we don't need Jesus just to be healed healing is just one aspect have you ever thought about about this um we are that we are the way we are because there are people that need to see us praising the Lord in chairs that that their people need to see us preaching in chairs and walkers and uh, without limbs uh, have you ever thought of this healing may not be God's purpose for everybody now I'm not saying that God can't heal that he won't heal, that he that he's out of the business of healing, and I'm not um, making an excuse. I'm just saying that there is more to people with disabilities than just healing. We have souls, we have spirits, we have needs that go beyond that. So before you focus on that. Mine for the gold, dig for the treasure, past what you see, go beyond what you see, go beyond your understanding, ask the Lord, what am I not seeing here, what are that, what are those person's gifts and what are those person's talents, and you will be shocked to know what, what they have inside of them. All they need is a miner to, to, to dig it out, to mine it out, and you don't know what they'll turn into. When you see that single mom, when you see that person, just ask the Lord, what is the purpose for me meeting that person today? What am I supposed to deposit in their lives today? And you will be shocked to know what God has in store. Let God use you as a as a my as as a miner to spot the gold in in people. Sometimes we we uh, focus too much on what's wrong with people that we don't see the gold in people. Um, Sometimes okay. Um, I was watching, uh, something, a leadership podcast the other day, and they were talking about how to fire people and stuff like that, and wh what, what I was thinking about in bed that night, maybe that person is not right for your organization because you need to pull something else that is not part of your organization out of that person. So maybe they don't do that job well, but you see another characteristic in them as their leader, whether it be their pastor or whatever, you could pull them aside to say, Maybe you're not right for it. You're not right for this organization, but your skills would be better used here. And when you see, when you mine a person's gold, you will be shocked at what they turn into. So instead of just letting them go or whatever, see what gifts they do have. So. Because maybe that's why God sent them to you. God, maybe God didn't send them to you for that position. 
maybe God sent them to you for you to drill down and find whatever whatever gifts, whatever talents they have in them and he knows that you can see it in them. So what so maybe uh, like you have a financial company like an uh, investment company and you see um, the person um, doodling uh, when they're supposed to be investing and you see them drawing when they're supposed to be looking at portfolios and whatever. They're not right as an investor. That's not their gift. But maybe that's what their parents wanted. So they went into it just because it's what their parents wanted. But it's up to you as a Christian company owner to to see that goal and say, maybe art school, you're not right for this organization, but I've seen you make some beautiful pictures and maybe art school is better is a better suit for you and they'll say yes I've always liked to draw but my my parents I, I want me to in, become an investor and you can um you can help them along and mentor them and maybe if God leads you can help them do promotions uh for the company and do artwork for the company or help them find something better suited. I know it's not possible in every case, but but that may be one solution. See the gem in people. See the see the God emerging miracle in them. Don't just see the what you see, uh, look beyond what you see. And he totally, there is so much inside of you, beloved. There is so much inside of you, so much God has in store for you. And today, I declare he's doing a new thing in your life. He's unlocking your life. Everything that was held up for you, Everything locked inside of you, I declare right now, is being released, is being restored. Every dream that you have, every goal that you have, is, be, is being birthed inside of you. I declare that you're feeling the birth pains. Everything that you've been going through, you've been feeling the birth pains for a while now. And the reason why it's so painful is he's birthing something new in you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare that this word, Lord, I pray that this word go down and germinate and bring forth fruit. God, I, I declare and see companies being built and books, oh God. I declare that pastors will become my minors to pull out in their team that which you have set up, set apart for each person. I declare that your spirit will dwell on this world like no sermon before. I declare that people will watch the sermon from all over the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your spirit dwell with us today. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.
And found in your love for me I just want to be here with you There's nowhere I'd rather be When you're singing over me I just want to be And found in your love for me I just want to be here with you See the gem in yourself today See the gold in yourself today Because it is there Trust me beloved It doesn't feel like it's there But it is You have to dig and dig and dig and pastors remember your key job for your team is to dig and dig and dig and find the gem inside of them get your ego out of it and know that it's not about you it's not about what they bring to you it's about what they bring to the kingdom and if that person is not right for your team they're missing somewhere else and your job is to help them tap into the gem they are inside to the God emerging miracle that they are inside okay guys I'll see you next week bye